I may easily be the oldest person to appear on this stage today. And I think the oldest person in the auditorium too, <laughs> except for my twin sister, who's down there, uh, 10 minutes older than me. <laughs> and by the way, she's... Yes, give her an applause again. She's <laughs> She's the mother of Lars, and if you just manage to see the beautiful woman next to her, uh, that's my wife. For 44 years now, we got married in the wonderful year of 68, revolution and love combined in Aarhus. I think that was not part of the introduction you just heard. Greeks, Gutenberg, Google, it has a nice sound, and it is a magnificent story. But we will begin somewhere else. A wonderful cartoon back from the 1850s, and I was a boy, not in the 1850s, but, <laughs> but in the 1950s, and I loved this cartoon. I, I knew it was funny, I never knew why. You can see a very plain girl explaining to the ministers, parsons, clergymen, priests, whatever we should call them, of the Danish church, that they should convert to Christianity. They are there already. Later on, I found out why it's funny. She is me. I have spent all my life explaining to people the obvious, the self-evident. Please, all of you, convert to Christianity, to self-evidence, to existence, to being alive, to being human, to be your own true self. That's my message. You knew it already. I can leave now. <laughs> that's what it's all about. No, I'm here to tell you anyway, because that's, that's the way I'm buggering people. My book did that, The Sixth Sense, and of course the movie that was made a movie on, based on the book, and it sold all the tickets. My book it did not sell, but uh, uh, I told my readers that they're human beings, and I told them they're language nerds and that reading is of the greatest importance. We are language nerds all the time, inventing and designing new ways of communicating. The finest achievement ever is this phonetical alphabet, dating back perhaps to 800 before Christ, Barry Powell, American philologist, thinks that it was invented. It's based on the Phoenician alphabet. But the Phoenician alphabet, as Barry Powell says, is no alphabet at all, because alphabets have to be phonetical in a sense. Was invented in 800 to write down the dactyls of Homer. Ever since, it has served all kinds of languages, because that's what 22 signs combined in an endless number of combinations to give us the great texts that have been produced ever since. It, it's ink on papyrus, it's print on paper, and I want to direct your glance. I wanted to have this kind of laser pointer, but uh, this they did not know about in, in Athens. I want to uh, direct your glance to the last red line. I made the red uh, color the letters. Impressus. That's the first time ever that printing is mentioned. P probably this is made by Gutenberg himself. And please try to read the year. Um, you can do it in the headline, but in red it is there to 1460. Now, 552 years later, we are here, I think. Yes, it seems that we are. Let me just have a closer look. Yes, we are here. This is the new beginning of the language nerd, and this is what Greeks, Gutenberg, Google is all about. It's no end of fun, and it's no end of drama. It's a magnificent story. Two millennia of handwriting, five centuries of print, and now five decades of... Uh, we, don't f we haven't found a name for this yet, have we, Lars? Lars, my, my uh, nephew, shouldn't we find, ask me to find a, uh, a name and pay me? Pay me if you are able to, I ask. Um, let's take it a bit slower now. 450, I have brought this fountain of youth with me. It's, uh, in Denmark, it's iconic. All young people wear it. A bottle of water, or is it pure Uso? Uh, 
Uh, this will make me... No, it's water. Um, from about 450 BC, something happens that is self-evident, obvious to all of us, that writing is addressed to everyone. It was a sensation then. And you might call it uh, the uh, social media beginning there, going public, not letters, not diners, not uh, priests uh, preaching for one another, but simple letters among common people addressed to one another. 2,000 years later, we have uh, the invention of print by Gutenberg, and we can begin to look backwards. Handwriting was uh, self-evident until we invented uh, printing. And now, when we are moving towards uh, this Google era, we can look back to the stupidity, even, of uh, moving from city-state to nation-state, having nationalism, the national narrative, and having, as I... Uh, give to you, ABCs, and having uh, boundaries, borders, is in fact lines drawn on a map to divide between two ways of spelling a word. And we fight wars over that. Uh, so we are the inheritance of um, fundamentalism, imperialism, nationalism. It's quite a burdensome legacy that we have to deal with, but all of a sudden, what happens? You happen. I shall not follow you. I'm too old. I shall remain behind in the Gutenberg galaxy, as it's called, by Marshall McLuhan in a wonderful book uh, dating back from the 60s, uh, printed books. In those days, we knew nothing else. And I was alive then, stud studied at the University of Aarhus. The Gutenberg galaxy will launch you into cyberspace. That's what we're going to see next, and it's for you to do. But I have to give you this interval of uh, a cartoon of mine, blasphemous, of course. We see the, the creator giving the, the fuck finger to uh, his creation. And you may think of this hand as my hand, not to you, but to my creation. And, of course, what's the point in this? I think this is a funny cartoon, and I know why. Um, she's giving a very defined answer. We need that answer from this moment. I was inspired by the wonderful Danish artist, uh, Johan Mogensen, who made the crazy cartoonist who has the magic pen. And the magic pen is, in fact, well, this might be it, uh, a pen that will create new worlds. It happened from 450 in Athens. He lacks a fire for his cigarette, and he draws a match on the wall, and the match becomes real. But be careful with magic pens. The wall catches fire. He can uh, draw his own twin, and they can divide the jobs between them so that uh, they can... That's what creativity is all about. Look at him. He can fight crime and have sex at the same time. Superman never found out how to do that. Um, but now I'll give you the greatest ever crazy cartoonist and the first ever Plato was his name. And we don't quite know how he looked like. But uh, I have chosen uh, to repeat this figure. But he created this marvelous cartoon of a person, a figure named Socrates. And he did that with a magic pen on papyrus. And this is the Apollonia Socrates, um, one of the most widely read texts in the world, I think. And of course, you know that it has the end of Socrates suggesting his own verdict and afterwards commenting on his own death, being down below in that eternal chat forum that is the world of the dead. We all go there in the end. Meanwhile, he's talking to himself. He's never uh, rather very concerned with his uh, jurors who are going to, to uh, sentence him to death. He's talking to himself. But the most famous words are these on uh, T-shirts uh, you can buy in Athens and everywhere. Hen oida, hotimeden oida, excuse my school Greek, um, but uh, perhaps Socrates pronounced it like that, but they were never, ah, okay, don't begin with that. Uh, <laughs> but they were never in uh, Plato's Apologia Socrates. But the point is, the right one, Socrates, is made by Plato, the crazy cartoonist, to be the figure that symbolizes total ignorance. 
We people know nothing. Socrates has one step ahead of the rest of us. He knows that he knows nothing. This way, you are certainly not prepared for what's happening next, that in the exact middle of the papyrus, he should say, this I know. And of course, if he said, I know that I know nothing once again, but he does not. He says what I began saying, be true to your own self. To your own self be true, as it is in Hamlet. To your own self be true. If you are not, it is an utter disgrace. This I know, he says, no fear of death should stop you from choosing your own self, your own true self. How can he know that? In the beginning, he knew nothing. Okay, now we love him. Now we have the high moral grounds that we are uh, gathered to celebrate here. But what happens next? The next unexpected thing is that he says for fear of his life, he never went into public life. For fear of his life, he chose otherwise. He cannot say that. It's the opposite of what he has just said which again was the opposite of the beginning of the Apollo years Kratos. What's the meaning of that? A wonderful musical composition, nowhere near what the actual Socrates may have said. The theme at the beginning is repeated at the end, the ignorance. It's unclear to all, he says, only God knows. These are the wonderful last words of the Apollo years Kratos, uh, plan to theoi. Um, unknown to and unclear to the rest of us, but we make this one effort in the exact middle, and you might say that it is an advance, advancing upwards through the beginning of the apology to this high level, the high moral ground, the top level of, of our existence, and we are happy to know that afterwards up there, the air is thin and we breathe heavily, we cannot stand our ground. We go down, we go back to reality, to compromise, to every day's troubles. And Plato knows that. That's the fine thing about him, and it's this kind of computer game that he's suggesting to us. He's interactive, Plato is interactive. Choose one of these Socrates. You can have your choice, and we need to choose. In Denmark, we needed to choose in 2006 the high moral ground or compromise with the Mohammed cartoons. I made this rather hotly debated cartoon in Denmark. It was censored because we know censorship in Denmark, contrary to what <laughs> our prime minister said then. But let me warn you against the magic pen again. If you are misguided by your imagination, if you think that Middle East people are like this, guy that the crazy cartoonist made, you are certain to lose your head. So please be aware, and designers of the Google era, be aware that we are producing our own imaginations. And that's why I repeat the necessity of doing what I've been doing, uh, studying Greek and Latin, following the first... It's, it, it's no end of fun being with the ancient uh, Greeks, and uh, following them till this day. Some people say, to, to explain away difficulties, it's not rocket science, but in fact it is rocket science. And you can see again, now we, I've, I've just turned the uh, chronological table upwards. So now we have leaving the uh, planet, gravity, getting rid of, demands lots of fuel, and you can see the uh, script of one, as I call it, and did in the sixth sense too. It is slow, it's heavy, it costs lots of fuel. The Greeks did that, uh, that to us. And afterwards, the first stage of the rocket is um, gotten rid of. And we go on to the next stage, the Gutenberg stage, the rocket is called. Greeks, Gutenberg, Google. And now we are at the exact beginning of the third stage. We are just getting rid of Gutenberg, and I, for one, am convinced that all the stupidity of nationalism, imperialism, fundamentalism, uh, spelling and the conflict of borders will be done away with when Google Maps is... Uh, they, I know they have complaints from people who say the border is not there, it's there. Uh, Caspian places like that. Um, that we have, a new, we have a new start here, and uh, we need this new start. And I might mention to you, you have guessed already, because I'm telling you the self-evident, that we are up there. We are up there in the red triangle where the astronauts or cosmonauts are. 
And Plato, from behind, from the beginning of it all, asks us, where are you headed to? Where do you come from? The, the very first words of uh, Plato's wonderful dialogue, uh, Phaedrus, my favorite, in fact, um, mark the, the top gear of it. You know what that's for. It's, it was meant back in the days of moon rockets to tear away this small vessel with the astronauts in the very last second if the liftoff, if ignition and liftoff would fail. They would be saved. I have to tell you, you are not going to be saved. The launch was so long ago that we are on our um, way into outer space, into cyberspace, so we have to deal with it. There's nothing else to do about it. And uh, now I found uh, for you, uh, well, I've made all of this for you. I've made it up, in fact, but it is self-evident. And, and I, no, we'll have this first. Um, the end of the Gutenberg era will see uh, a kind of dinosaurs growing from a, a small beginning, small nation states. Now we are coping with uh, the European Union, and they will become extinct like dinosaurs because something very new is happening. In 2000, we had a, a referendum, and you know that we voted no. And I had lots of uh, strips about that. And here's uh, my main character. He asks his wife, you're voting no tomorrow? Yes, she says. Uh, yes, he says in astonishment. No, no, she says. And of course, he repeats, no, yes, he says. And he's, yes, no. Um, and uh, uh, their daughter, Gaia, uh, says this, this sums up the whole Euro issue perfectly. Um, meaning is everywhere. Meaning, we are in the cosmos, we are in the universe. It's not empty. We are here. My uh, comic strip ended in 2009, and the, the, the atheist, the scientist who reduces existence to atoms, molecules, biology, mechanism, is unhappy with being left, you know the famous words from the New Te Testament, Eli, Eli, Lamarsha Bakhtani, my God, my God, why ha have you forsaken me? He's left. We are not left. We don't know what will be happening next. We are up there. This is now. This is tomorrow. And here we are, the ones who do. What are we going to do? We may have this diagram. That was what I found in the, in the last moment. Uh, see green and blue, and we are entering the red field now. Have a look at the acceleration. The Greek acceleration was the biggest. And the drop, I think you can see a drop was the church, of course. Uh, and then Gutenberg tried it once again. What's the drop there? Totalitarianism. Because every t time that we are fueled by information, technology, IT, we shall uh, advance to a level, not the top level, but the level where power people take over. And then all the designers, all the wonderful people we've heard today will have to start all over again, and we're doing that just now. And well, you have to be in some kind of panic. That's us up there, of course, and, and what I love to, to do as a cartoonist, the, the symbolism of panic. What are we to do? We don't know, but we can be happy. This is the second last pic picture. A child is there. This is just being launched, the Wonder Book, and uh, seeing him or herself looking at the dinosaurs from the past, Put in, instead of this misguided imagination, put in Socrates, the well-guided uh, imagination by Plato, and we shall see that cosmos is logos, its meaning all over, and we are nav navigators in meaning. And I shall end up giving you an iconic drawing. I made it, in fact, for TEDx Athens 2012, the picture of tomorrow's human being, tomorrow's child, the child of the day after this day. And as I like to say, tomorrow is getting closer with each new day. And here you have the unborn children of tomorrow in the cyberspace of meaning. And please, all of you, make sure that this child is born and will be happy with the world we leave to it. Thank you.